Okay, before I start this video, I want to say a quick thank you to you, the viewer. I know you've probably never seen a walkthrough that required eight videos and a series to explain how the darn thing works and showcase all the sounds. So, bravo, eight videos. It's This, this is the last one. We're going to get right into it. Sorry, let's back up one click. My instrument, 40 sounds, and there's also one with 120, all three banks. So we'll start with the 40. We're only going to make one or two sounds here, showcase how it works, and that'll be it for this one. Click on the wrench, and everything might start looking intimidating to everybody, and it really isn't. We're going to turn everything back off, actually. And down here are all the groups, settings, and all these groups follow the same format over all 40 that we've made. So the first thing I'll do is click on the script editor. And this is where the code has been placed that brings up all these features, functions, and whatnot for every panel. The last two have been left blank. You guys are free to mess with those if you'd like. Or import. I'll show you what you can do real quick. Under presets, you can import anything else and start messing with our sounds even more as long as you know how to work the back end. And I'd advise watching some YouTube videos on how to work this in more detail. But for now, we're just gonna to stick to the basics of how to import samples in and start populating this. So we're gonna open up the script editor, the wave editor, and I'm gonna scroll down to show what all these are. That's this guy here. The mapping editor, which allows you to actually drag and drop your samples into this area, which we'll get into in a moment. The group editor, instrument options we don't need to touch so there's all the groups we've created every one of these aligns with the interface itself sound one two three four five this kind of reflects all that sound one two three four five every time you want to go to the next group you'll click on this sound two and then go to sound two and now you'll, you'll hear whatever you drop into this area now i'm going to slot for a second and go back to the front end and address something really quickly I've noticed on all the forums that, hey, wouldn't it be great or won't it be great when one of the devs out there finally figures out how to import samples on the front end? And I'd like to address that because what you guys are asking for is a, a, a very tall order and B, really makes no sense because what you're asking us to do is basically reskin all this and all of the sub options that go with it, which are very, very extensive. I don't know, like, I would bow gracefully to anybody that can re rebuild all this on the front end when there's no point. And I think the argument is, yeah, but the wrench is intimidating. Once I get under there, spaghetti happens in my brain. So really, I'm going to try to just get rid of that fear for you because that's all it really is. I'm going to showcase how to simply get to WAV files or whatever other formats contact allows you to import. Drag this into your C3 note doesn't matter how thin or wide, we can even do this. We'll drag it right to the top and that applies it to the whole key area. Click on the highlighted note and drag it up to C3. Now that is your root note. So if I hit C3 right now, let's hear this. Make sure we're on sound one. There we go. Okay, so now if I go up the keyboard, Hear how it starts sounding horrible? That's because we are actually stretching it but trying to preserve how long it is if we go up or down the keyboard. And that's because we're on something called TM Pro, which stands for Time Machine Pro. We can change this back to sampler or DFD and it'll actually play in the speed that it's supposed to when it's sped up that much going up the keyboard. So the C3 will still sound exactly the same and play for five seconds. But as I go up the octaves, it'll start playing faster and faster. And it still sounds kind of crappy once it goes that high. So typically what we do is record samples at least per octave or per two octaves and then stretch and blend them together. So let's do something like that next. Okay, it's a bit of a funny sample, but it'll work. We'll drag this to C5, let's say. I'll do this just to explain how this works. I'm gonna drag the right and then drag the left and overlap just for an octave. I'm gonna hold down shift and click this guy too. 
or you can do command a and it'll select everything now right click batch tools if you have more than one going on and X fade the keys into themselves so now we're gonna fade from here to here what else we could do is drag these down import more samples overlap it this way and then fade them into each other so you can fade per velocity or per key slash pitch so now if I hit the C3 and then go up the key slowly we gradually move into the next sound so there's a good example of fading from one sound to the next right or just using one sound and stretching it across the whole key range I'm gonna get rid of those okay I'm gonna import this guy and try to do a loop okay so I imported my sample I'm gonna get that root note to C3 I'm going to click onto the sample loop area click one and it's gonna say alright I'm gonna loop the whole thing all I wanna do is loop from about here to about here and this is gonna be tricky because we need the end point and the beginning point to be perfect and this button here allows you to get right in there and try to line up those colors and because they're different left and right on mono samples this will obviously be easier but on this you gotta match both left and right and sometimes that gets a little bit tricky so you just kind of drag this over until until you start seeing them line up we're gonna get back out of this now if I hit the C3 it's gonna play from the beginning S is the starting point play through and then once it hits here it's gonna loop back to this and it's gonna keep looping this part until I tell it what to do right now it's set to until end which means it'll keep doing that until you release whatever the release is set to And if it's set long it'll just keep looping until it fades away into nothing or I can tell it until release and that will mean the next time it loops around let's say it's playing it's playing it loops it's playing I let go of the key it will then play the rest of the sample okay so let's go okay so that click is obviously what you really want to avoid because we're on DFD we can fade the beginning again so if we just click on this and drag up you'll start noticing that this can help that click let's try again okay it's still there but it's not it's not so bad we'll try to move this around a little bit find a different point that's not bad now the only disadvantage is that X fade only works on DFD sampled stuff so if I go way up the keyboard here now it's gonna play much faster and this part might sound funny now alternatively if I go lower it might sound better that's too low anyway to, to show as an example but you guys get it right okay next I'll show you guys how to work with drums really quickly here's actually a kit with 16 I'm gonna grab all 16 I'm gonna drag these in on the lowest possible point you see how it's growing and shrinking I'm gonna drag it so it's at its lowest possible point and start it on the C3 and those grid lines really help with finally with the final placement and finally getting them onto the keys okay so now as of C3 going upwards I should have this in the same order that I dragged them in at alphabetically okay so you can still have a combination of one shot hits being triggered or taking any of these and still stretching them out let's say I like that I'm just gonna single click on it control C control V it'll paste onto itself and then you can move it back then click away you'll see it doubles up it's twice as bright you can move one back and stretch it now you can roll stuff alright so that's real easy for drums and then you can still fine-tune them pan them 
change the volume of each to master them a little bit more and still have all these options for the one shots as well to get them as good as you can get them. Okay, something else that you can do, which is really cool. This is our main module. This is the My Instrument. So let's say you're working with our main module. Let's go to D90s. Let's, and let's say you find a sound you really like that you're using in the main module and you're like, ah, I want to take that out and stretch it like this right here. So I'm going to go into the wrench. I'm going to keep hitting this key as I scroll down. And I see that it's glowing right here every time I hit. So I'm going to click on that. It's the 90s kit. And now... I see all those markers, so I know it's that key and that sample. I can click on it, Command C or Control C, go into the My Instrument version, scroll down, go into your Sound 1, just click anywhere on here, and Apple V or Control V. It's going to paste it, and from here on out, you can maneuver it to sit wherever as its root note, and then stretch it. or start doing this over and over and building your own little instruments out of our instruments on sounds that you want to stretch or say put, putting together that perfect drum combo of all the drums into one kit that you like so it's really easy to find samples you like and then get them into this to keep working with them further so now that it's dragged in stretched across let's get back out of this mode and back into normal mode i'm going to go back into my first layer here Something I should have said right off the hop is when you open this up, the first thing you should do is go up here and do a save as and name it something else, 40B or something, so that you can work with it. And if you mess it up, you always have this guy as your template that you start with and try not to mess this one up or create a backup of this one even somewhere else in case you do mess this one up. So now I'm going to go into one last feature, which is going to probably intimidate most, but those that are ambitious, we're going to go in here, we're going to do a command A to select everything, command C, and then go into sublime. Check out sublime and then check out the extension for sublime. That is the KSP extension. You'll find them really quick Googling, or if I have time, I'll leave links in the description. And from here, you can do a command F or control F and look for the word sound. And this is the code that tells all these buttons what to label them as. So if you want to create your own kit, your own kits and name them, you will do two things. You will come in here, rename this from sound one to whatever you're going to name it. And then that same name you name it, let's say we name this Congo, we're going to come in here, double click on the word sound one and name this Congo as well. All right. Now, if we select all this, you're supposed to compile it and run it and then it'll be copied into your clipboard and you can paste it. But since we're only changing text, it's pretty safe to simply copy and paste it back in here and run it or click apply. And to demonstrate, I'll click apply. This will run and sound one should then read Congo. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the My Instrument. What else I want to cover one more time is if you've always wanted to make your own contact libraries but don't have the resources to go past having the samples, we encourage you guys to build out something amazing with this and submit it to us. And if we like it, we'll post it on our site for sale and split profits with you guys 50-50. And everything is automated. You guys have a full login area with full transparency to the money, the traffic, the conversion rates, blah, blah, blah. And it's all safe, done through a network where you sign up to, and it's done through the network. So it's not like we are the ones that do or don't pay you. It is the network that sends me and you a direct deposit every week. Okay, we offer a lot of traffic. We offer a lot of buzz through our outreach and obviously we offer a cool new tool and I'm curious to see 
if we will attract sample developers to create amazing third-party plugins and extension packs for Vivid. And maybe we'll even give it its own little branding treatment and throw your name or your brand or whatever you rep in here as well somehow. I'll also extend the offer to KSP developers. If you guys want to go in here into the empty sub panels, add more stuff and do cool, wicked, creative things, then same offer will go to you. Submit it to us. And if you do some amazing things with it, we will also offer it as its own expansion packs with those extras specifically assigned to just it. All right, so that's going to cover it. Thank you very much for paying attention to this whole series. If you liked it, please drop a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And most importantly for me, I really encourage you guys to share this. Share, share, share this on your social media, in the production groups out there, on the forums out there. Quick shout outs to VI Control, KVR, Future Producers, Gear Sluts, probably forgetting a bunch more, but I don't want this video to drag on. So shout out to everybody out there. And also a quick shout out personally to Evil Dragon, who I've learned a hell of a lot from on the forums to get me from zero, starting my first day of coding in KSB, to this within a matter of four months, thanks to my previous coding and learning new languages often. So this was a great, not too difficult process for me. But having said that, the code itself, I'll put a disclaimer out there, is fully me learning from others so it probably can be optimized a little more and or there may still be a bug hiding in here somewhere that i have not found and nobody's really been able to break it so far quote unquote so having said that again thank you so much really look forward to your feedback on this and as a last point i'll say whatever you create with this if it's on soundcloud or you've put it on youtube or you've done a video like this where you're walking through it doing a review anything we will host it and put it on the website to show what users make with it and the reviews that come in from end users. Thank you so much, Mr. Norbs, Toronto, Canada. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great day.